Here we are, guys. Hi. I'm Tim. This is Veronica. And we are Crack Clay. And guys, the devil's been attacking, but we're not going to let him win. Ooh, we're going to pers we're gonna persevere. Yeah. We had a rough week, rough weekend. I tell you, you when you it. were trying to serve the Lord, the devil doesn't want you devil to. Does not, mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. he devil doesn't. does wants to do is to make an impact. Yeah, but we're not going to let him win because we, we know his future. You know, we, we didn't make it to church today, but we saw it on TV. And uh, we had a wonderful time watching on TV, didn't we, honey? We kind of had a, we kind of renewed our vows, mm -hmm. just had a wonderful time. Got on our knees and prayed and asked Jesus forgiveness and, and really talked about how important for us to have a great relationship to our kids because mm -hmm. they're watching that. They're watching what we do. But it was also a fun thing because, uh, you know, I go work out. And I went to work out about 1030, which is usually because we had a rough time today. But I went down there and worked. I used to go downstairs. I used to, my, used to give our pins, flashlight pins. I has about our crack play ministries, Tim and Veronica Bratton. And I love giving a, a track about Mickey Mantle. I love passing out to people. But I went down today and I, I didn't bring none of that stuff. I'm thinking Sunday morning and, and there, was, there was a guy there that worked at Wegmans. And we were talking and Jesus kind of told me, Tim, you don't have a pen to give him or Mickey Mantle or, or tell him, but just go there and talk him, tell him Jesus loves you and get a relationship with him. And we had a good talk. He lives right over here. And I told him my wife makes 100 loaves of bread every Christmas. And I dress as Santa and we pass them around to our neighbors. Hunter Lowe with a gospel track and a pen. And we're going to go to his house. Oh, he told thank me, you, Ron. He told me where he lived. And we're going to go see him. But so Shepard and I better start baking. Huh? Better start baking. But I want to tell you one thing. In Facebook, I said, what's the difference between the thief and the cross and Mickey Mantle? They both gave their life to Jesus on their deathbed. They were both like me, sinners, their whole life. But you know what? Miraculously, the thief on the cross said, Father, I want to go to heaven with you. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Mickey Mantle, Bob Richardson, uh, who, was the, who was the baseball coach at Liberty University, led him to Jesus on his deathbed. He didn't deserve Jesus. Just like me, I don't deserve Jesus. But by his grace, he's in heaven. I'm going to play ball with him someday, or at least talk to him in heaven. Maybe I'll play catch with him. That's right. But, you know, Hopefully also, there's a ball in heaven, right? Our church, our yeah, pastor really that like we watched today said we all we have all fallen. We are all a disgrace to Christ. All of us. All of us. You can't be good enough. You can't get to heaven on you, your no, works. No, it's not about works. Or looks. <laughs> With looks, you can go to heaven. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sweetie. Good to see uh, everybody. You're so smooth. Oh, um, pumpkin. <laughs> I like to do it, baby. What, what okay. you got in your mind, sweetie? Okay, so uh, we promised we were going to talk about you know, take it back to the beginning. We've been talking about marriage, right? We've been talking about marriage and ways to um, ways to help it with marriage, right? His right. needs, her needs. We went through all the his needs, her needs um, things and about marriage. And, you know, I, I listen to Focus on the Family every day right. while I work and sometimes go back and listen to it a couple times if I really liked it. And there was one that they did last week about dating, and I think that that's so important, and that's where so many of us miss the boat. And um, I remember when I was going through my divorce, I was watching online. Um, I was home for a few weeks in Mobile with a broken leg, and I would watch sermons online and on television on Sunday mornings, but online all week long. And I remember, I think it was Andy Stanley, and an Andy Stanley series about sex and marriage, and he said, be the person that you want to marry. And I thought, what does that mean? Huh. And what a concept that is. Be the person you want to marry. And so I started thinking about that, and I remember someone told me when I was in my early 20s and dating to make a list of and to write, take 10 little pieces of paper and write down the traits that I'm looking for in a husband. But the most 10 important things to me that I'm looking for in a husband and to put them together, clip them, and put them in a drawer. Okay. And then when um, I am considering someone for marriage, that I should then pull those out and look and see if that person fits the bill. But you know, the thing is, sometimes you're so caught up in infatuation that you aren't seeing, that you kind of um, want to make them fit. Yes, you want to bend it a little bit, mold them to right. fit those lists. Right. And so I found it really interesting. Um, and then when I think about myself, I didn't date anyone back then that I wasn't the person that I wanted to marry, you know? Because right. I had had a, um, 
a really bad, my um, in, something happened, I, my heart broken in my, as a senior in high school when, yeah. when my um, first right. love died in a car accident. And I kind of walked away from God at that point in my life. I, I was you so angry. Him, did I did. I blamed God for that. I was so angry about it um, that he took him away from me. And so I stopped living for the Lord at that point, And that changed the trajectory of my life at that point. So I wasn't being the woman, the young woman who would attract the man that right. I had listed on those, those 10 pieces of paper. So I have to blame myself for that, right? Um, so on Focus on the Family, Gary Thomas, is it Gary Thomas, who wrote the book Five Love Languages, also has written a book about dating. And he was on a two-day interview um, two weeks ago, and I listened to it, and Tim He's and I have been talking about, about really Tim good. and I have been talking about talking about dating, and so we've listened to it again, took some notes, so want to share it with you. So, the broken process, dating is a broken process when we do it the world's way, right? So, kind of like the, a, a good start is the same Jesus that keeps us from, doesn't want us to have sex before marriage, is that same Jesus that encourages us to have sex after marriage, amen? Right, that's one right. of the great things they said, Amen. right? That yeah. when you're dating someone in merit, when you're dating someone, you want to make sure that they're that that what happens is when you're right. in the infatuation stage, right? You're not thinking clearly you're that, that right. you're blinded. You're not thinking. They said that this was interesting. Neurologically, brain mapping shows that that infatuation during that time you are actually blinded and cannot think clearly and infatuation can last 12 to 18 months isn't that amazing who knew isn't that amazing now that um you know we want to talk about how old i am now all that stuff comes out it's so cool that it's so cool for our kids to have that today anyway um so you want to make sure that you're the person when you're looking at someone who's a candidate for marriage he said you're not just looking at the person you love. The person you're in love with should, doesn't doesn't necessarily mean the person you should marry because lots of people get married because they're in love, but they haven't looked at the character of the person and uh, how character. character is so important. Mm. And what is character? And what are you looking for in the character? And and how um, you want to marry in the Bible? Proverbs turns Proverbs thirty one talks about what a, a woman's character needs is and what should be and um and that's what men should be looking for it lays out the definition of a godly woman based on character and paul says um you know to marry for the sake of righteousness and first corinthians seven thirty nine, which we didn't bring mm -hmm. um which tim will look up and read mm -hmm. um paul is talking about to the widows about you know if you marry again marrying in christ and um you're not just marrying for sexual purity but also for um you're not just dating for sexual purity but also for emotional purity so um when how do you know when you're infatuated infatuation is when you only focus on their better traits and you know you remember those days you're sleepless so focused on getting one getting who you want that you're not even stopping to think about if they're a good catch if they're really a good candidate for you um also it makes you feel desperate and clingy and um and so i think we've all had those those times so we want to wait until we are sure that infatuation period is is past and some of the questions that he asked are, um, oopsie, sorry about shaking the table. Right. To find, is that you're not looking, that you want someone to respect you at their wedding because respect grows on your wedding day. Respect grows. Godly character is character that's going to last. Right. And you want someone who is going to be there, who's going to be living, who's going to be drawing, living out Matthew 6.33, with you and that is and they said that the most intimate fulfilling marriages exist for something beyond something greater than themselves that those people are serving god together that those marriages are you want to pull yeah. matthew 6 33 and read yeah. that please uh -huh. matthew 6 33 but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you how important is like again priorities but god first in your marriage Big because if person. you're both if they it's that Jesus. biblical triangle right if you're both if you're both 
have God here and you're both First, growing closer to God, to right. then you're both growing closer to each other. Right. And that biblical triangle is so important. Amen. So it's so important. And and ladies, it's so important not just to think about, not just listen to what they say, but listen to their actions. Do you understand? Do you know what I'm saying? Listen to their actions. Don't just li just just don't take a lip service. You've got to discern what's lip service and what's truth, and that's how they're truly living their life. And Gary Thomas made a good point. He said that if 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 you have a best friend, it would be odd that you're dating someone and they don't you don't ever they don't know about your best friend. Well, if you're you're living for God and God is truly a part of your life, then you want to talk about you're going to talk about him yeah. because you're going to talk about what yeah, happened right. when you were praying today or when you were doing right. your devotion and, and and find out if he's Amen. spending time in the Word every day. Amen. Is he seeking God? Because if mm. he's not seeking God, you don't want him seeking you. Right. Right. Amen. Good rule. Not seeking God. Don't seek me. You want marriage him to is be hard. Marriage, marriage is, is hard. hard because guaranteed it's difficult. it is it's hard. It's going to get hard. And, and and that's what they said, and it's true. It doesn't character matter. Shows. Your character shows when things are difficult, and you want someone with good character. Um, a good wife is better than a good job, that's right? That's what they say in Proverbs. Right? A, a good, good wife, wife is, is better, better than, than a good, good job, job, isn't it? Right? I mean, I would transfer. I had moved from my job, and I would move for a good on my, my wife, right, honey? Right. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a good marriage is one of the best human experiences that you can have. Mm. So why shouldn't we work hard right. to find the right one to begin with? And right. because and remember, when you're seeking that mate, you're not only if when you're young and seeking a mate, not only are you looking for a companion, but you're also looking for your future children's parent right. that you're going to be parenting with. And so think about what characteristics they have that you want to see right. in your children. The um, word, and the word fornication comes from pornography. Pornification, that's where it comes from. Right. And whether it's adultery or sex before marriage, it's wrong. Don't do it, it's wrong. Sex is the gift for married couple only. Okay. So if you're, going, if you're going to have a cake before marriage, you might have a crummy tomorrow. You might. <laughs> a crummy you might. tomorrow. That's right. And that, but you know what? What I found in my wisdom of old age is that the rules that God, that 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 God gives us, that the rules that God gives us, is not because you don't want us to have fun. Who's older? Okay, go ahead. I yeah. don't want to talk about yeah. that. Don't worry about um, it. It's not because he doesn't want us to have fun, right? He's not trying to limit oh, our yeah. fun. He's trying to enrich our, our experiences. Oh, Absolutely. He's trying it's to enrich our experiences. It's totally for our own good, totally for our own good that we follow those rules. They're, Amen. They're... Um, recommendations to have a more fulfilling life a more fulfilling right. marriage and the purpose of marriage because it is difficult and what God's trying to accomplish is to rub off the selfish edges and that makes it difficult life's always going to have challenges always going to have challenges no matter what you do we have some now aren't we? we we are problem. having challenges and that's okay that's, that's okay right. so character so you want as close to Jesus you, you want to know, know that the person face. that you're marrying is going to be able to go through and those challenges with you in life in a Christ-like manner and that their character is going to be the character that is going to put Christ in the center of that and handle it in a Christ-like manner and, and treat you with with the respect. And what you're looking for is someone with the fruit of the Spirit as Galatians 5. Right. Um, fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5. Galatians Absolutely. Yeah. With the Holy Spirit. The, when we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes in our life and the Holy Spirit helps us with this fruits of the Spirit. Oh, this is awesome. You're I feel doing, like that. Walk, right? walk by the Spirit. That's it, honey. Walk by the Spirit. Right well, there, that's spirit. The... Walk by the Spirit. You will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. Is that what you're talking about, honey? Keep to, to keep from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, Enmity, strife, jealous, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So those are the things you don't want. Now, but the fruit of the spirit is to the, this: the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. We still have them, though. We still have that. But if we live by our flesh, we'll succeed to that. But the spirit, that's Jesus inside of us, that's become a born-again Christian. He comes inside of us. 
And that's who we want to gratify. We want, we want the spirit. Because our flesh can't do those things. No, we can't do it. Only the supernatural strength and power of the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do it. Amen, sweetie. Right. And when we talked about the his needs, her needs, right. I mean, really, all of this, all of that that we right. talked about goes with this. I mean, you're becoming more selfless mm. when you're serving your spouse, like we talked about in the his needs, her needs, and meeting their needs mm. above your own. And you're exercising these, the fruit of the Spirit when you do that. You're exercising love, joy, peace. Long suffering. You know, you also, you want to, so patience, amazing. kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, all those things. That's somebody you want to spend your life with is someone who, who embodies those characteristics. Righteousness, right. Jesus. Right? Yeah. You want to spend your life with someone who embodies mm. those characteristics. So when the going gets tough, you have this kind of character to rely on in your marriage. Amen. Amen. Okay? Mm, and awesome. you also want to look for someone that is so sold out to Jesus that they would rather offend you before they offend him. Amen. I love that quote he said. Amen. And that was an awesome That's quote. Awesome. And I really hope that my kids do that. Um, mm. So ask them, ask them when I talked about knowing what's just words and how do you know what's just words and they say that they're this, but the, how do you know that they really are? Well, one is you look at those characteristics of the fruit. Do they have that fruit? And another thing, you know, ask them, ask them a question. Ask them what, what what's God challenging you with these days? Tell me what he's revealing to you in your prayer time and see what their answer is. Because um, you want to know if they're giving lip service to God or are they really truly seeking him daily? And for parents, the best way, the best way to give your children, to teach your children about a godly marriage is to work on your own marriage so that they can see what it is. That's right. Amen. Because the number one question people ask their dad, Dad, you love mom. That's what kids want to know. Do they love each other? We're going to be leaving next week to go to Indiana to see my mom and dad. With my sweetheart. We might say hi from Indiana. We might do that, sweetie. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be, we will be in Shipshire. Pray for each other. Day. Praying for yeah. you. You guys have any prayer requests? Man, be glad to We'd send that way. We'd be happy to pray for you. Pray. We pray every we morning. We pray for a lot of people. We pray for a lot of people in some on Facebook and mm -hmm. sharing. And we think of different people I'm think of right now that needs prayer. And we, we keep a, we do keep a prayer list. We take we that very we seriously. We, we keep a prayer exactly. list and we write it down. Amen. And every morning, even when Tim's out of town, we have a Skype. We, we, we video We video call each other every morning and we read the Bible together and we pray over that list together. And we pray for people to receive Jesus in their heart. Or to understand and that the down. sick and the suffering. And, and because, so we right. just... Because right now, people are... No better time to be alive, guys. People are open to the gospel right now. There's no hope in this world. Look around this world. Is there any hope in this world? Do you want to hang around here? Not me. I'm glad my home's in heaven. I want to take as many people as I can with me. So, and you can pray for us okay. with we our travels you. next us. week and pray, pray for, for the we challenges we're having Jesus as a consequence to what our actions are. Do you want to close in prayer? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, go before uh, people today and made uh, on this week before Monday. May you go before us. May we put you first in our life and may we go as victors. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Amen.